Welcome back to the video series for Play Framework using Scala. We left off last time. Uh, we're working on the Ajax version of our task list that uses JSON to communicate back and forth. And we had gotten to the point where our validation returns either a true or a false to let us know whether or not it worked. And when it's true, we wanted to call load tasks. And we have a, an action that theoretically provides a list of tasks converted to JSON. Since the tasks are just strings, that's fairly straightforward. And what we wanted to do is take those tasks and add them into our task list. So in our uh, template, we have a unordered list that has an ID of task list. And what we want to do is create items for it. And this would be much like what we had done here where we created these li, the list items, and we had set an on click and a task. Our first thing to do here will just be to get the list items in there with the appropriate task. In order to do that, I want to write a for loop for tasks, for task of tasks. So for each task, I want to create a new element in the DOM. So let, sure, we'll just call it li equal document dot create element and it'll be a list item element. And then I also want to create a text node that holds the text for our task. And I didn't want quotes there because task theoretically is going to be a string for us. And then we can say li dot append child of the text and our, unor our unordered list ul dot nope that auto let's go ahead up here and declare a const actually these could be const as well of ul equals document dot get element by ID and our name was task list. So ul dot a pin child of li. Okay. Now I believe that our data model starts off where our appropriate login has some elements in it. So if we refresh, we should get back our login page. And if we log in, there we go. Okay, so it switched over to the list, and this time it populated the list with the values that we want inside of here. So now we have the additional things we need to do. We need to be able to click on these to delete them. At least that was the, the interactivity model that we had with version two. And we also want to be able to come down here to add them. So I should be able to type an element and do that. And of course we currently have this issue that add task doesn't exist. We have some time in this video, so let's go ahead and let's look, let's start adding that in. Well, we had a post for add task two. We will change it for to add task three, which uses task list three and has an add task in it. Add task will be an action with an implicit request. Now, 
this is going to be a post and we're going to send the body of what we want as JSON again. So it's actually going to look a lot like this. The fact that there's so much duplicated code here makes us, we should consider taking some of this out if every single time that we have JSON, we are going to be requesting it, doing a convert on it, checking for success and error. Uh, really the only code that's different is going to be that part right there. So we could try to remove some of this duplication for the time being, though I want to get this to work and then we can think about how we would go about uh, fixing this up. Okay, so we should get the body here, which should be, now this time it's not a user body, this time it's actually just going to be a string. Okay. Um, and so this would be our task. We also, and we can pull this out of task two, when we added a task in, ta in task two, we also have the fact that we need to be dealing with someone who is logged in. And so if we come back to here, uh, actually, if they aren't logged in, so I'm going to make this the outer part. If they're not logged in, I don't want to do anything with them. Uh, and the get or else on that. Actually, we could copy the base, the bottom line from here. Okay. So like some place, nope, that is appropriately indented, ah, but all of it needs to go in one. Okay. So, um, now this one, when it didn't work, it returned an empty string or an empty list. There's this interesting question of what is it that we want to return here? Um, and I believe that what of course, this part here is going to change. So we are just getting a simple string, and that will be the task. And we're going to add it and then return OK. Add it and return OK. Um, OK, so let's go through here. We've copied and pasted a lot of stuff over. Let's see if we're happy with what we have. We get the username out of the session. We check to see if it exists. If it doesn't, we're just gonna give them back an empty array of strings. Because it turns out that for this, um, that's an interesting question. Because we have a task list here, uh, there's a part of me that actually wants to keep these as separate uh, elements. And so this would do nothing but do a remove and send back uh, just a Boolean value that tells us whether or not they succeeded. And so in this case, it is JSON dot to JSON of true because it worked. And if for whatever reason it fails, we kind of have two options. I guess I could actually, in both of these cases, I am willing to send back an OK of false. As just a way of saying that things failed. OK. <clears throat> so that should add a task. Now, it's not being displayed because this doesn't give us back anything. Uh, we would then have to, in the JSON, call the task list again in order to refresh that. But that's part of why load tasks is a method here because it's very easy for us to, to call it. So we've laid the foundation for adding a task in. We just aren't calling it when they click the button. We'll come back in the next video and we'll add that functionality in.